And now a page from our Sunday morning almanac, December 11th, 1910, 101 years ago today. The day visitors to a Paris exposition saw a new sort of lamp from the laboratory of chemist Georges Claude. He had perfected the art of creating light from electrified neon gas in a tube. Before long, neon was being used in signs, first in Europe, then in the United States, where a Los Angeles Packard motor car dealer installed America's first neon sign in 1923. From gas stations to restaurants to neighborhood theaters, many another small business was quick to embrace the neon sign as its own way of standing out from the crowd. Good old Broadway. It was a kind of a pretty sight with the neons twinkle like little stars. And then, of course, there was New York's Times Square, a fantasy in neon, transformed anew with each passing year by advertisers trying to top each other, creating huge illuminated displays that became world-famous landmarks. This is Las Vegas, known throughout the world, where nighttime is truly fun time. In the boom years after World War II, Las Vegas scrambled mightily to match, if not outdo, New York. Not that everyone felt enlightened by neon. <laughs> a Seinfeld episode spoke to the plight of anyone who's been trying to sleep with a bright neon sign outside the window. I can't eat, I can't sleep. All I can see is that giant red sun in the shape of a chicken. <laughs> Despite all their glitter and glitz, signs made of neon are far from eternal. In Las Vegas, the original Dunes Hotel sign was demolished in 1993 in a light show all its own. Well, in more recent times, neon signs have been under challenge for newer forms of lighting, such as LEDs. But at custom sign shops, such as Let There Be Neon in New York, the delicate art of shaping the tubes and injecting the gas goes on. For true believers, nothing but neon will do.